All right, guys. Uh, we have right now a situation that I want to talk. It's half guard, top. Uh, actually, I, I taught a private uh, Friday, and the guy asked about how can I like be comfortable in top position. What is my first step uh, when I when people pull me to half guard? And was a very Fernando was with me at the private. It was a very uh, interesting points that we learned together so this is why i want to i want to uh, talk this one i wasn't planning to show exactly those de those details but as the private ran so well so i want to also share with you guys so the guy he brought brought me up the question is about how can i beat frames shield sorry and how can i control my opponent's upper body because a lot of times when we have half guard top we kind of struggle to uh, 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 get pressure on top in the gi, as we have like access to collar and, and, and belts and whatever, we can kind of pull ourselves uh, against the opponent's frames, but it's not necessary, uh, and also it's not enough if you want to beat frames and shields, right? So we're gonna see two different approaches uh, to beat his shields and frames. First one, we're gonna come up on the, on on the feet, and then just a little bit, just to elevate uh, the level a little bit, use head position and walk to flat Fernando's uh, uh, back on the mat. And the second option, we're just gonna use some uh, 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 steps around with knees on the floor. So the point here that you guys have to learn about is every time I'm sitting on my knees, even if I even if I hold Fernando's gi, I can't apply pressure. Why? Because even if I pull myself like using the, uh, like uh, my whole energy here is gonna be hard to making him uh, feel my body weight so most of the times when you guys get top position your pressure not most of the times every time you guys get top position your pressure comes from your head position not from your grips your grips only gives you support uh, to maintain top position and also find some balance in situations that you're working with your legs in a weird uh, configuration but your head, let's say that I'm here, I have my both knees on the mat, and I have access to belt on the back. You guys can, can you guys can't see, but you guys understand what I'm saying. And you guys can have access to the collar. He can avoid this kind of collar. He can kind of fight against my arm, but at some point it's gonna be easy to grab the collar, right? So if I keep myself on my knees with my head high, and I try to pull my elbows against my body to apply pressure, Fernando is, of course, he's feeling my strength, but he's not getting tired from uh, this type of action. If, instead of keep my head high and use my elbows to apply pressure, I just uh, 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 I just generate enough uh, tension here on my arms to find some extra balance, and I start to drop my head positions, my head position, and it's pro back. So I start to switch my body weight from the mats to my upper body. So it means the more I move on top, the more I make it closer, more Fernando has to push me away. Yeah. To not uh, allow me to connect chest to chest. So it's always a battle about where my head is being placed and where his frame is. is. So I can relax here, of course, if you want to install the match or if you want to just not be effective and pass a guard, you can literally like stay on the knees here not uh, allow him to do anything and also you can progress but if you want to be a good jiu-jitsu fighter you have to start to use your head position on top in any scenario you are so it, it means wide the legs move the head closer to your opponent's far shoulder like here and then you can start to generate pressure and then find your your ways to get chest to chest so first method we're gonna do as i know that every time he side on his upper body frames and his shields will work well. Either shield on the hip or on the shoulder. Uh, because his side on his body configuration helps him to not spend energy to, to frame. My goal is to start to flat him on the mats. Because every time I flat him on the mats, he has to use two actions. One, he has to hipscape and bring, yeah, hipscape and bring his shield back. So it means he has to move one step more to recover his soul. Every time I flat him, his legs are in a vulnerable position. Any distance he creates between his knee and his chest, 
he's just weaker and weaker. So when he starts to move his leg, it's super easy for me to drop my level and then control his hip. And second uh, 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 difference that we have for flatting my opponent is when he's side on, I'm fighting against, not just the upper body, I'm fighting against, because he's side on, I'm fighting against his bones. The frames are strong when he's side on because I can't smash his arms, right? So it's literally his joints that is uh, uh, carrying my body weight. When he's flat, because I did a good job walking around the hip, every time I drop my body weight here, so the minimum effort I do, shaking my body on top, look at how his arms shakes in a different way. It just happens because he's benching press me right now. So it's, he, it's not your joints that is holding me on top. It's your strength because he has to bench press me. So this is why we have to flat the opponent first and then second we have to fight to get chest to chest and to get under hooks and use head position to apply pressure and, and everything you guys probably know but also we are talking again right now. So flat your opponent is your main goal in half guard and this is why we are uh, talking about those uh, uh, quick details to help you uh, uh, guys in that scenario. So how are we gonna flat him right now? Hand on the bell, hand on the collar, first method on the feet. So I come up on my feet like that, and then instead of try fight against his upper body, I'm just gonna get stuck on his frames and shields. So I have to walk around his hip. So how I do this, this knee, that I have uh, 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 outside half guard. So I'm gonna start to drop my head level and apply pressure on his upper body. My outside leg from half guard, I'm gonna come and point inside to inside my opponent's hip, like here. So I'm gonna shift my body and point both knees the same direction. So right now my head position, I keep dropping myself over Fernando's frame and I'm gonna step around with the leg I have inside half guard. So first one, I cut against the hip Second one, I open my leg and walk around, flatting his hip and back on the mats. So in here, I feel I cannot apply pressure, just having my head up and grip, so first step, drop head position. So I start to feel his pressure on the frames. So I come up on my knees. So when Fernando tries to push me away, it's gonna be very difficult. So I, what I do, cut my knee, my outside leg against the hip, wide my leg and walk until I get this position, the first pit stop we have. I, I normally call to my students, chest to hips. So my chest is inside Fernando's hips. I can touch my own knee, like here, with my elbow, and I can kind of lock my body in that situation. So I have hand on the collar, and I can pretty much avoid any kind of uh, uh, hip movement that Fernando can can apply even if he bumps against me, I can keep my chest connected, or even if he bumps outside, it's hard. It's I'm in a very tight position. So this first uh, pit stop helps a lot you guys to build chest chest connection. So second thing that we're gonna do right now, we're gonna apply pressure on the upper body without losing uh, uh, the control we have on the hips. And how we do this? So when I'm moving my head to apply pressure on the upper body uh, frames. If I move my head to the same side of the passing half guard, it's so easy for Fernando to push me away and bring his shoes back, and then we are done. We have to uh, work uh, around his shoes again and start from zero. So every time I'm applying pressure on top, because I have my support from the hand on the collar, and this also this hand on the belt, I can move with freedom easily. So I'm going to start to use my head position on the diagonal line, like here, covering his shoulder. While I'm doing this, I start to gain space with my outside arm, like here. So I start to cover everything and control my opponent's shoulder. So I can literally post my hand like here, or if I have access to the collar, I can also grab the collar. But grab the collar is going to be too much work in the real scenarios and, and, and quick transition. So just the hand on the sh shoulder is fine. So the more I move my head position away uh, to Fernando's body and reaching that uh, 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 direction, the more I expose his elbow and the more I decrease his pressure on my neck. So if I come against his frame, the more I move forward, you guys can hear my voice change because his shield is inside my, is inside my neck. When I move out there, 
it's not that bad because I'm pointing his elbow out, right? So as I'm pointing his elbow out, I have few options here. If you guys have access to the cross face, go for it. But most of the good guys, they will keep. Yeah, like Fernando is keeping his hand inside my biceps. Fernando's not, he's not a terrible fighter. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> so he keeps his hand inside my biceps. So it doesn't allow me to get a cross face. So when I start to move to that direction, I feel I'm beating his shield, sorry, his, his, his frame. So if I keep my body square to him, it's not wrong, but it's not as tight as shift my hip and drop my chest on his chest. So right now Fernando has half guard, it's tight, so I can start to point my both legs against his hip. So what I do right now, so hand is still on the collar, right? So and I can use this hand if I feel necessary as a support to post on the mat and post my head on the mat, that is a good option. Or I can keep this hand right here and gain space with my elbow. So I flare my elbow and then I build some nice and tight base here. So right now my head comes to the mat and I bring my hip up. So it's very difficult right now to Fernando keep half guard. I'm always gonna get access. I'm always gonna get access to three quarters mount like here. So what is my choice from this position? If I get a second underhook. Beautiful. I go for it and I do my job. Most of the case is gonna be hard. So my opponents are good. I can get a cross face and I can get a double on the hook. So I post my hand on the mat and I switch my head position right now to the other side. And naturally I can beat his shield. Even if he he uh, uh, follows me with his hand, it's not a big deal. We already have the head position and this hand a little bit more hand. And this hand on the mat has to come underneath my opponent's head and then we have right now a tight underhook, head on the mat and a solid base. So to pass his guard right now it's super easy, it's just about time you guys can pick what to do. I would say come, you can keep your legs strong, uh, come with my shoelaces uh, over his quads like this. It's easy because I can kind of sprawl and extend my legs, apply pressure and then fight against his hips to come up on top and then get a good control on half guard and then mount. So the point here to half guard is every time we are in the scenario that my opponent has shields and frames, shields and frames on upper body, so I have to flat him to put him in a vulnerable position. So when he side on, his body works naturally and he can keep no way. When I flat him, uh, him back, I can easily Build my controls, work to three quarters mount, work to get a cross face, work to get outside under hook, work also to get inside under hook if it's necessary. And my head position, always covering the shoulders, do the main job. So if I'm one side and I want to build a pressure and turn his body, like here, as uh, uh, as we are here, like I have the hand on the collar, I'm controlling him here. I want to keep passing to all there, I have to bring my head position to that direction. If, let's say, I get a first underhook already and I want to keep passing to this, uh, to the uh, near side, so I have to use my head position on the near side to build uh, 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 my passing. Why? Because I don't have a three quarters mount on there. So, this position that we are working, the head position is still working, is still being applied in the same way, always covering, covering the shoulder. I'm covering the far shoulder right now, just moving myself forward like here, and then shifting my body to drop my chest on his chest. My hand comes up, I have here under hook, I flare my elbow, hand comes to the mat, and then I pick what I'm gonna do. When if another tries to bring his elbow back, his left one, it's gonna be very difficult. So I walk, walk, shifting, and I cover his hip. So now I have option, hand comes to the mat, I can keep passing to this direction, or I can even better switch my head position and then we start to uh, get this hand, my right one, deeper until I reach my hand inside his neck. So I have my fingers inside Fernando's neck like here. So my head position comes to the mat and when Fernando tries to bring his left arm back, it's impossible. So I'm in a very tight position, chest to chest, forehead on the mat, so I can come with my my free leg and work 
to make my leg, which is inside the half guard free, I step on the hip and I get the mount. So, to beat shields and frames, the main goal is flat your opponent's, uh, opponent's back on the mat. And every time you guys do it, that is your, uh, uh, that is your main goal on top. And I don't, I don't think I, I explain enough about head position on top, like uh, when we are starting the movement. Or I, I explain it enough. I think you do it pretty well. Like the head, I, I'm just confused right now. But, so when we have like top position, so I, I'm, 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 I'm speaking about this type of action where I make some transition from my body weights on my legs to my body weight on my upper body. So every time you guys build pressure on any type of guard, it's more about how you guys spray your legs and use the upper body, sorry, the head against your opponent's upper body instead of your strength to pull the guy against your own body. So here, no pressure. It's like tight to move, but there's no pressure. So right now, the same action with my arms, but dropping my upper body against my opponent's uh, frames. When he tries to push me away, it's very difficult, right? So I feel I'm connected to him. So right now when I do come up, cut and walk. And the same thing can be when we have knees on the mats, same grips, head position, point my knee, wide my leg, and then I start to walk until I get the same technique. So I just walk, opening my leg, walking around and reaching the situation. And then you guys know, cut the head, Diagonal line, be the frames on the hook, switch head position and pass, or just get on the hook, head position, and pass for the near side, and you guys can do more than one type of half guard passing. That's pretty much that. So if you keep in mind that first approach, drop your head level to make your opponent uh, carry your body weight. That is the main, uh, that is the first step. Second step, flatten him back. So now I spend energy to fight against the frames and shield, uh, frames and and shields. And third step, because he is flat on the mat, the more you move your body diagonal for both directions, the more you expose his leg strength to hold your leg inside half guard. And also, he loses because you are walking diagonal. He loses the strength to like keep the frames in place because of the angle you're moving your body uh, around his shoulders, right? That's it. Okay guys, uh, right now we have a topic that I'm, um, uh, uh, situation, position that I'm developing uh, since I moved to Austin, to train with John, uh, and it is mount position. So I never had that skill on my game, because I never uh, had that vision actually about pinning people. I always was great going to the back and my percentage choking people in uh, tournaments are pretty high, uh, but from the back, uh, 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 chest to back connections, not like mount position where I'm pinning and facing the guy. So since I moved here, John started to like, not force me, but his program, uh, 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 how can I say this approach a lot of that type of pin, half guard and mount. And I developed a very solid game on top, of course, with uh, his vision and also my uh, ideas about Jiu Jitsu. And I want to teach you guys today how I uh, hold that situation, how I make myself have on top for widening my arms, for using my head position, for, high, uh, for fighting against my opponents frames that he could have on my hips, whatever, and different types of support from collars and, 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 and ankles crossed. And also I wanna finish this quick overview, showing you guys the position that I just finished my last match against Pedro Marinho, a triangle from mount, which is a very uh, strong technique. And I taught during the whole uh, 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 week, this last week uh, to my students, 6.30 a.m. only mount situation. And during the week, I saw almost like, not almost, but I would say like easily half of the class hitting those triangles. Even Fernando, I know you guys cannot trust him much, but even <laughs> Fernando got shot some 
triangles from Mount because this control is super solid, right? And you, of course, we're always looking if you have some, uh, uh, if you're familiar, can I say if you're familiar with mount, mount position, you know that one of the protocols is get uh, uh, is to get an underhook, but for this mount triangle uh, that I shoot on Pedro, I knew that he would hide his hands on my back because when he fought Gordon, Gordon would spend the whole spend the whole time getting on the hooks, and this is why I was ready to shoot that type of triangle because he had his hands around my waist. So let's see how we build this control. Once you guys learn how to pin opponents from mount, I promise you guys it's gonna be your main goal, like in any uh, 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 sphere. So here, what I do first when I get the mount. I don't care much about hands on the collar. I don't care much about where my legs are. I just immediately, at the same second I get this situation, can be from half guard to mount, can be for side control to mount, can be for a scramble situation, and I ended up getting here. So I always post my hands on the mat. Why? Because if my hands are not on the mat, as things are going fast, we are in a real situation. Any bump Fernando does and my hands are not there, I have to post my hand and maybe expose myself in different ways for him escape from the, from the mount position, from bottom mount. So once you guys are there, first thing, hands on the mat. So it's not only post your hands on the mat, you have to know how to post your hands on the mat and that is uh, uh, where the real control starts. So you guys can think, ah, I can just post my hands on the mat, I can have the same type of uh, 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 traction on the mat, but it's not the same. So when you post your hands on the mat and it's like some like physics stuff the wider is your base the stronger it's going to be and when you are in the mount position you have the same concepts so when i point my fingers out and i full extend my arms i can kind of drag myself down against my opponent's hip and i can make my upper body heavy against the part of his body that he has to use to escape from mount so if I'm here, not have on top, and I have my arms pretty much aligned to my opponent's shoulder, when he starts to bump, my body weight is nowhere, and he can easily, uh, uh, he can easily start to off-balance me. When we have this situation where my arms are wide, and I have my fingers pointing out, and I'm dragging myself downwards, so when Fernando tries to bump, so I'm not losing my connection. Why? Because I have my, the full extension of my arms, so it's not loose. I'm pretty much tied on top. And my fingers pointing out, kind of turn, not kind of, it's actually turn my elbow and point my elbows down. So it means he cannot break my elbow. He cannot break my arm at all there. My arm doesn't move out there. I have already the full extension. When you have your hand, your finger, sorry, pointing forward like this, my arm can break to this direction. So depend on the type of bump he does, if he's strong, if he's heavy, or just if he moves quick, I can lose this strength because I have to spend my energy extending my arm if my fingers are pointing forward. So if my fingers are pointing to the side, I don't need to spend, I don't need to spend my energy extending my arm, I just need to lock my body like here, and then my elbow is not breaking with any bump he does, right? So main point here seems retarded, but super, uh, super important. And I can, I can, I got, I got approved from my students. Once you get the mount, wide your base and point your fingers out. So because you have this type of uh, uh, control him, when you uh, drag yourself downwards against the hip, you increase your uh, uh, pressure and body weight like a few times. So you can actually be head on top. So why we wide the base? So first detail, fingers out. Second detail, why we wide the hands? Because even if I turn my fingers out, but my hands are close to his body, uh, because I think I have to get a cross face, or because here I can kind of be closer to my opponent, my base are not wide when he bumps to the side. So I have to move my hand, probably he's gonna catch it, and then I'm gonna end up on bottom or in a scramble situation. So this is why you point your fingers out and you wide your base, right? 
Second thing, once you wide your base, naturally, because you are dragging yourself down, you are dragging your legs down as well. So Roger Gracie, he used a method where he gets his knees under the opponent, uh, the opponent's uh, arm paid like that, and he sits back, he hangs back, having his hand on the collar like here. I tried to develop that skill and I couldn't, and I think because uh, I spend so much time training Nogi, but at the same time I feel more, comfor more comfortable to have transitions uh, 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 and different variations when my body is working more against my opponent's hip instead of my opponent's arm a bit, right? So my main goal in the mount always is first, find some base, point my fingers out and dragging myself against my opponent's hip or also I can use some cross ankle control where I have the same type of base and I use this back heel action to control a Fernando's bump. So I cross my ankle and I'm not squeezing my opponent's body with my legs. That's not what I want. I want to wide my base, even my legs base, and I want to connect my hip on his hip and back here right now. So I'm controlling his hip completely. I have my base wide and also I have support from a head position if it's necessary. Let's say that Fernando bumps to one side. You can bump, bro. <laughs> it's not gonna work. He's not gonna. He's not gonna get to bump. But let's say that he gets to bump, and I lose my control a little bit. So what I can do? Post my hand on the mat. Keep my ankles locked. And when he tries to escape from here, it's literally impossible. I'm always in a good spot to be because I'm dragging myself down, and I have this back heel action, right? So. Worst case scenario, from both hands on the mat, you have also your third support, your head. When he bumps and you lose your balance a little bit, you can also post your hand on the mat, readjust your hands, pull yourself down, and then adjust your body. I'm super happy here, right? So if you feel you want to switch this control for a second type of uh, posture on top, instead of use both hands on the mat, you can come and not cross face him. If you cross face him, you are kind of losing completely your balance in the direction you have to decide to have cross face. So when he bumps, it's gonna be easy to come up on top. So what I have to do here, I have my ankles crossed or I just have my legs controlling his hip. Both are great. So what I have to do, I choose one. And instead of use my arms wide, I come and I just post my thumb be, uh, uh, underneath my opponent's neck and I flare my elbow. Once I flare my elbow, this is my first support. But you guys can see the difference about flare the elbow, it's pretty much square to the, uh, to the shoulder or wide. So it means I have a good lever, but it's not necessary if he bumps out there. So what am I gonna do? So if he bumps and I lose my base, you can bump. So I can now always use this hand to move to the center line and my head position on the mat. So when he tries to finish the bump, no way. I'm pretty heavy on top. So what it helps me, I can move back and change sides. So I have hand on the collar, so I'm super heavy here and tight. I can use this hand always moving around to find some good base. And also I can move back and then be ready for a second bump or start to get my underhooks control, and then do my work to move and progress inside the technique, right? So you guys have two ways to control him from your upper body, two different setups. First one, hands wide, in my opinion, the best one, because I like to uh, be more, have more freedom to work. And second one, thumb inside the collar, but remember, your elbow just can be this far away from your opponent's head. You have to have support from your head position if he bumps much and you lose your balance. So be ready to use your head, post your head on the mat, right? And your legs configuration can be hip against hips or sprawl down and back heel action, widening the knees, right? I'm not trying to squeeze him. I see a lot of people trying to squeeze, even if I have this set up, hand, uh, thumb behind the necks or hands on the mat, trying to squeeze your opponent's body, it's completely wrong. It doesn't work. 
So you guys have to wide the legs and back heel. When he tries bump right now, it's impossible. It's literally impossible, right? So those uh, two setups that I'm using, those two setups that I'm, I have two setups, sorry, I have two setups uh, uh, to my upper body, hands wide or one, thumb behind the neck, and I have two setups to my leg, two different types. You can combine those uh, uh, those four setups. Also, like, can be ankles crossed, can be uh, uh, hips against hips, or it can be hands wide and thumb pose, right? So right now, what are we gonna do? We are doing a good job here, like controlling Fernando. So my body is working well. I have some good line about his hip, but he knows that I'm, I'm, I'm trying on the hooks because I already tried one, I already tried two, and he starts to hug my waist. He knows that when I get another hook and then I can become dangerous. So what I have to do from here, I have to start turning my body from one direction, get here, a cross face like that, I don't want to use my shoulder on his face, I just want to get my arm, my hand inside his armpit. And then I, I'm going to use my head position leaning forward like that to apply pressure with my chest. And then I'm going to bring my knee up like this. So I have to cover my elbow with my leg like that, right? So it's the same setup that we use uh, uh, in triangles from uh, second show. So I start to use my head position like this. And I bring my knee up and then I can sit back on my own leg. So right now what happened, as I told you guys, so that position was the same one that I applied on, on uh, that I finished my last fight because, because my opponent was hiding his hands on my back. And it's pretty easy to deal with because if he has his hands on my back for too long, I'm not in an uncomfortable position. Even if he tries bump for both sides, I have a head position, if he tries to bump to my back, this knee is so high, my left one, that he can't do much, right? So once we are here, how can I fight to unlock his hands? I can do two things. One, I can come with my leg up and then have access to his elbow, like here. So I'm always going to get access to his elbow because it's easy. Uh, it's easy to turn my body because I have this knee up to see his elbow. If my knee is down like here and I try grab his elbow, maybe I can, I can make it, but I cannot turn my body too much. So I have to slide my knee up to look at to his elbow and then start my fight to posture back and unlock his hands. Once I unlock his hands, I have to keep controlling his elbow until I cut my knee over, right? So once I cut my knee over, I can start to climb for the triangle, right? Worst case scenario, I'm here, I'm trying to fight against his elbow, but Fernando is giving his life to not unlock his hands. Look at how easy it's gonna be to get an underhook because I'm bringing my leg up to bring his elbow closer to my arm. So my knee is up, I can always slide my arm inside, move down, and then what do we have? Underhook. It means that we got what he was denying, uh, what he was avoiding to give me, the underhook. So from here, you guys know the protocol. Always build so arm triangle first, get your fingers inside your opponent's neck, and then fight to get underhook, double underhook, 10 S mount, right? So worst case scenario, you guys will end up having some uh, double underhooks. So this is why when I fought to unlock Pedro's hand, I got it, I cut my knee over his, uh, over his biceps to avoid his opportunity to lock hands again. When he tries it, it's impossible. It's physically impossible. He, he doesn't have like, uh, like alien arms. So right now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use my knee to pin his arm on the mat. My head position comes to the mat to avoid any kind of bump. So I'm already high on his body. I'm gonna switch my hand from the elbow to this type of post where I have my the palm of my hand, of course, controlling his arm, but I have my fingers pointing down. So I'm gonna pin his arm on the mat and I'm gonna extend my arm. Once I extend my arm, when he tries to move his arm around, 
it's going to be difficult. Why? Because I have my full extension here. My arm is full extended. So he can't move much. So second step, look at my knee. It's covering my elbow. So I'm going to come, pose everything, and pose my hand inside his armpit. So because I'm posting my hand inside his armpit, I naturally start to elevate his head. So I'm elevating his head. When Fernando tries to post his head on the mat again, it's going to be very difficult. So I have space right now to swing my leg over or just walk over his arm and lock my triangle. This is why this hands here is impossible. My hand inside the armpit. If I'm just controlling his shoulder or even his armpit like that, there's no space to my leg. Probably I'm gonna swing my leg over and then have a huge war to lock my legs. So I have to make this easy transition where I just slide my hand up and I start to flare my elbow, leaning back a little bit. So right now two things can happen. One, I can walk literally like this, very smooth until I get a situation that my leg is ready to lock the triangle. Or two, the same thing I did in the match, because it's a high level competition, sometimes you don't have the same... Uh, uh, it's not only time, but things move so quick, you have to think quick quick as well. So I made a transition where I just release this grip and, and, and send my leg over. So right now we have the triangle, same thing. This hand on the army pin, uh, uh, he stops Fernando to post the head on the mat. When he tries it, it's super difficult. So what I do, I have enough time to start to lean my body to this direction and wrap his upper body. So this is the first pit stop. So if I don't stop here, probably while you guys are setting up your triangle to lock your legs, you guys are gonna lose it. Why? Because most of the times this arm is gonna be on the back or even if your opponent moves his arm around and you don't have your own knee covering your foot like here, he can always slide down, right? So important here, I made the same detail on my match. So I stop here for a second until I get enough time to start moving my body and lean my head position to this direction. You guys can take a look about how I open space on my legs when I lean my body to this Move back a little bit. How I open space to lock my triangle when I get some angle to this direction. You guys know every time we are locking triangle, we have to change the angle from uh, squares body to perpendicular angle. So I'm going to do the same here. I start to bring my head, my head level down, and then we get this type of situation where my foot is coming out from the mat. So what that means? I have the triangle out there, and then I can move back to the center. What I can also do, grab my own shin, get the angle on the side, elevating everything with only my knee on the mat, head position to avoid bumps, and any kind of explosive movement. I pull my shin up and I lock my triangle. Once I lock my triangle, I move back to the center, it's over. He can't escape from this position, it's literally impossible. Just see if you are lazy and you lock some triangle on your uh, calf muscle. But if you get this full lock because you got the angle, like here, you guys can see how easy it is. So, so I look completely to the side, I'm perpendicular, and I drop myself. Hands on the mat, forehead. I can elevate and turn his body, and I lock it. So let's say I have short legs, no problem. The more you find your angle, like here, more you can pull your shield, and more you can lock it. So you move back, and then you have this situation. So to finish, my hand comes on the mat, and I go for the same angle. I look towards, uh, I look to my opponent's hips, and then I shift my body like that. And my idea, sorry, buddy, my idea is drop my uh, the side I have my lock, the same side of, same side of, the same side. My hip from the same side that I have my lock, I have to drop on the mat. So I want to look to his legs and drop like here. So I can apply pressure and then because I'm kind of twisting his head, I can uh, finish. So just remember you guys, and I, I don't remember if I said this, but I'm just, no, I didn't say this. So if he has his arm on this side 
and you try grab your shin and for some reason you're not getting to block because or you have short legs or your angle is not good this pit stop allows you to fight against his arm if Fernando is hiding his arm on my back because I have this force pit stop my knee covering my foot I'm always gonna get move my hip forward drag his arm to the side and then lean blocking my triangle coming back and finishing the work right so that was the position I did. Uh, and I was looking for, give you guys a quick overview about how I, I, I made, uh, how I make the mount a stable position. And those four uh, uh, details are pretty much what I teach to my students every time I have a chance to talk about mount. Hands wide, creating base, thumb inside behind the neck, underneath the, the head. So those two details are great for the upper body setup and lower body setup. Knees not uh, 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 it's not about your knees, your legs. Sorry, squeezing your opponent's body, but it's about your hip against your opponent's hip. That's the first setup and the second setup, hip against hips. But you have that addiction about ankles crossed and back heel action widen the knees so if you combine those four setups you're always going to get a success and this triangle is pretty strong i'm just showing you guys because i just hit on my last fight and remember I, you just can shoot triangles from mount if you get elevate the head so the hand inside arm pit all the way around and the elevation flare in the elbow makes a huge difference for you guys not shoot triangles shoot triangles and lose the space to get your leg underneath your opponent's head.